Today we had the IPM field day here at the Bradford Research Farm. It's where Kevin Bradley and his associates and other faculty had a wonderful tour, two tours of the latest research that they're doing and well over 150 people attended that are in extension. They're also in industry and also some farmers and they found a number of topics. Now, we started off with a little bit different we, with, with Andre Reyes, who is our extension crop management specialist. And he told us how he's using the last 40 years of weather data and yield data to come up with uh, trends about maturity date and planting date interactions that would help us not only on yield, but also on the management of herbicides and pesticides and, and other management factors. Then we moved on out to the field and we picked up with uh, Reed Smeda. Now Reed Smeda is our, our research and teaching weed scientist. And him and his students are working on how to control water hemp using the, the Extend Flex chemistry. And what they found out was that you really need to have a residual also mixed with your Extend Flex prior to that because that way you can get the control that you're looking for. He also talked about how shatter cane is still an issue. And there's four basic biotypes of shatter cane. And there's really no rhyme or reason when they start emerging. Some emerge early, some emerge late. And that's why we have such a problem trying to control shatter cane in our, in our fields. We also talked to Mandy Bish. Dr. Mandy Bish is our state plant pathologist. And one of her big issues is still tar spot. Now tar spot is a disease in corn. It, it was found in the northern states as came into Missouri. And we have it, it for the last two years here in Missouri. It infects the plants in June when temperatures, the average temperatures are between 64 and 73. Now the nice thing about now in July, that's over with because our temperatures are, are much higher. But we do have that infection. But what they have found is that the return on investment of applying a fungicide is very positive. It costs, you need to recover about $40 per acre or about 10 bushels per acre of, um, of, 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 of corn yield to offset your cost of application and the fungicide. And that, and that pays off about 80% of the time. So that's really good news. She also was not as convinced with soybean fungicides working that well. Uh, frog eye leaf spot is one of them, but they only have about 21% return on investment on those. But what she's really concerned with is Phytophthora. It's still out there. We had lots of uh, soybean genetics that are, is resistant to it, but now we've, we've been using that for 30 years. And what happens after 30 years of using the same genetics? we starting to get resistant. So that's what's really on her uh, radar as being, being a real issue right there. Now, I, IVR is our new state extension specialist. Now he talked to, to us about the importance of scouting and not just in one spot, but all over your field, you need at least four different areas in a 50 acre field where you take up to 20 swipes to really get a good idea about how much insect pressure that you have out there. And you must really know how to, how to identify those insects and, the, and, their, and, and then how they feed because some may feed on leaves, some may feed more on the pods. So that's how you're going to uh, uh, manage those by knowing what you have out there. Uh, his concern is that there's a new soybean gall midge. It infects the base of the plant. It's in Nebraska right now, and it can cause some really bad, uh, severe soybean damage. The problem is, since at the bottom of the plant, if you, the insecticide applications will not control it because it's so far down in the canopy. Now, our early seed treatments will keep it intact for a while, but once that breaks down in about June, then we start getting some issues. So, so keep that in mind, the soybean gall midge as a rising bad pests coming in, in in the soybeans. Well, a second tour then featured more of Kevin Bradley's research. And we started off with Kevin, again, talking about water hemp being such a problem that, that we see so often. And he was looking more at the Enlist technology. And again, just like with Reed, he found that you've got to include a residual first, and that will help on your, on your uh, water hemp control when you do that, because by themselves, most post-emergence 
here in central Missouri are only about 75% effective. So we want to make sure that we have at least two different modes of action out there. Early as a residual, and then when we spray post, we want at least two going on there, like an enlist and a glyphosate, like a glyphosate. Now Kevin's program's also doing some little more unconventional weed controls, like how do you get deer out of your fields? And there's lots of products out there. They, they don't smell very good. Some of them are dried blood. Some of them are other aromatics. And his graduate student found that unfortunately, they don't work very well. Even though they are fairly rain fast, they don't seem, seem to find this nice correlation about when to apply and keep the deer out. So we're still on ground zero on that. He also has a graduate student looking at drones and using drones for herbicides. Now, Kevin says with fungicides, we've, we've, we've done a great job. What Kevin's graduate students are doing is comparing drones with land applied machines. And what he's finding is that the drones put too much too many fine droplets out that also drift off, off the target area. So they're not getting quite the control as they'd like to. But Kevin also reassured everyone that with technology coming out in a few years, they'll have this figured out and drones can be very, very useful applying herbicides in, in soybeans and, and in corn. Then the last thing that, that Kevin talked to us about was he has a graduate student looking at pasture weeds. Now, I, the thing about herbicides and, and the pastures, they're very, very hard on our lagoons. And what Kevin found out that he could use an old fashioned wick type applicator for Roundup or glyphosate, and that could control a lot of the weeds fairly well. You just didn't want to make sure you got too low or if you dripped any on, on your pastures. But he also found that electrocution worked pretty good. So that was a couple of alternatives that you can use elect uh, electrocution or our old uh, rope wick type to kill the uh, weeds, the broad leaves like ironweed or Johnson grass, but then you also keep your uh, legumes, like, like your white clover intact. So there is a lot for everyone here to learn that the whole spectrum of weed control and pest management from pastures to soybean fields to how to keep the deer out. So this is a great event and it will, we can't wait for it next year. And next year, Kevin is saying, it's gonna to expand to be the crop in IPM Field Day because there's so much crop research that we need to highlight out here at the Bradford Research Farm. We'll talk to you next time.